students, let's uh, do the trial exam paper one for Penang stage. So the first question is the quadratic equation. And then you are given the root half P and half Q. So basically you will start with the A, B, C. And then you need to find the sum of the root and the product of the root. So the A is the coefficient of x squared, which is 2. And the B is negative 3. It's a number uh, that times to the x. C is a constant. Then you find the sum of the root. And you find the product of the root. And then you will take the root given by the question, which is half P plus half Q is equal to 3 over 2, right? Okay, so this is our sum of the root. And then we need to take the two roots given and multiply. Okay, because it's a product. Product means multiply. So 1 over 2p, you will have to times with the 1 over 2q. Okay, that, that are the two roots given. Equal to 1 over 2. So then you will get the simpler one is p plus q over 2 is 3 over 2. And then the other one is... Uh, 1 times 1 is uh, 1 and then P times Q is PQ. So PQ over 4, right, is equal to 1 over 2. So you will get two equations from the sum of the root and the product of the root. So from the product of the root, you will have PQ over 4 equal to 1 over 2. Okay, now what is the instruction of the question? Form a quadratic equation with the roots, which are 2 over p square and 2 over q square. That means you are given the two new roots, so you have to form the new equation based on the new roots. So in order to form the equation, we need to find the roots first. So we have to solve the p and we have to solve the q. So let's uh, solve the Equation simultaneously. So you have P plus Q over 2 equal to 3 over 2. And you have P plus Q equal to 3 because the two can be cancelled out. And then from there you can express P in terms of Q. So hence the P is 3 minus Q. Right? So now we are going to substitute equation number 1 into another equation from the PQ over 4 equal to 1 over 2, right? So now we need to solve the equation simultaneously because uh, we need the value for the P and Q before we can solve the uh, new roots, all right? After we got the new roots, then only we can form the equation, okay? So now I'm going to substitute the P into Q. Okay, again, I explained to you, PQ over 4 is 1 over 2. So, PQ is equal to 2. Alright, understand this is from product of the root. And then, we substitute the P equal to 3 minus Q into this equation. Alright, so, uh, we will have to make it one unknown before we can solve. So, we make it every terms Q or you can make it every terms P up to you. So I will have 3, okay, Q minus Q square equal to 2, all right, after substitute. So I will simplify to the general form, and I will factorize. So I will get Q equal to 2 and Q equal to 1. Okay, so now, after I got Q equal to 2 and Q equal to 1, I need to substitute into the new roots given. The new roots given are 2 over p square and 2 over q square, right? So uh, we need to find the value of p and q first before we can form the new equation. So uh, now I'm going to find the value of p after I got the value of q, after I factorize. So this is a q. Okay, I'll do again. So q is 2, q is 1. Then hence the p is 3 minus 2 and uh, p is 3 minus 1 so i have two values of the p which is 1 and 2 also right so that means for q equal to 2 the p is 1 okay and then for q equal to 1 the p is 2 
So now I need to substitute into the new roots. The roots that I circle are the new roots. I can choose any pairs of the values to substitute because it will be the same. Just choose one pair. So if I choose P is 1, so I will have the roots which is 2 over 1 square, which is 2. Another one is I will have to use a Q equal to 2. So it will be 2 over 2 square, right? Because when P equal to 1, Q equal to 2. Okay. So now I have the root 2 and the other one. Okay, let me show you the other one. Is I have to substitute the uh, P and Q value into the new roots. Then only I can find the new root. So for first one is 2 over 1 square which is 2. For the second root is 2 over uh, the Q is 2, right? So 2 square, 2 over 4, 1 over 2. So the new roots are 2 and 1 over 2. All right, after we have the new roots, we need to form the equation. So we can plug into the factor. So it becomes x minus 2 and then x minus 1 over 2 equal to 0. This is the faster way to get the equation. So then you just do expansion. All right, so x squared minus 2x and then minus 1 over 2x and then plus uh, 1 over 2 times 2. This is one way. Or maybe you want to use this way. So you substitute the roots. Okay, 2 plus 1 over 2, sum of the new roots. And then product of the new roots equal to 0. Okay, x squared minus 5 over 2x plus 1 equal to 0 and then you have to make it general form with the a b c r integer so we times 2 for every terms so we will get the equation okay 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equal to 0 this is the new equation okay the red one is a new equation after you find the p and q you get the new roots you form the new equation Next, we will discuss question number two. Ahmad took four minutes, 20 seconds to complete the first kilometer run. He could not sustain his stamina. His speed decreases uniformly for each subsequent kilometer. He took more than 20 seconds compared to the time for the previous kilometer. Find the time taken to complete the first 10 kilometers. So when you read the question, highlight the important keywords. And then, then you try to connect to the topic that you learn. So this actually is about the AP, right? So the first term is actually uh, 4 minutes 20 seconds. So we need to make sure the unit are uniform. So we convert to seconds. Is better right so 4 times 60 plus 20 so uh, 260 is the first term okay everything in second and then because the question say he took more than 20 seconds so that means that is a common difference so the second term will be 280 and then the third term will be 280 plus 20 which is 300 right so this question is quite easy. The question asks find the time taken to complete the first 10 kilometers. So uh, hence we use a sum for the first 10 term and then we solve it and we will get the answer 3500 seconds. All right. So this is the answer for the host question involving arithmetic progression. Right. So the answer is 3,500 seconds for the uh, 10, the first 10 kilometer. Okay, now let's proceed to number 3. Given that P plus 1 over 3, 6 and 3Q are the first three terms of a geometric progression, express the first term and the common ratio of the progression in terms of q all right so this is a geometric progression and you are given the first three term so firstly we have to list out the first three term 
So we have p plus 1 over 3, and we have the 6, and we have the 3 q, and the question say uh, these are the first three terms. So that means the first term is p plus 1 over 3, and the second term is 6. Then we are asking to express the first term and the common ratio of the progression in terms of Q. So let's try to find the common ratio. Whenever you see GP, geometric progression, that is how you do. You take the second term over the first term is equal to the third term over the second term. And then you cross multiply. After you cross multiply, then you will get the relationship between P and Q, right? So you have 6 times 6 is 36. And then you have the uh, 3Q times with the P plus 1 over 3. So you can simplify, all right? You can simplify and then express your P in terms of Q. And then after you have the P in terms of Q, you can substitute into the first term, okay? Because the question say express the first term in terms of Q. So we will substitute the uh, P in terms of Q into the first term, all right? So let's see how to do. I'm going to show you how to find the first term in terms of uh, Q. So uh, basically when you see in terms of Q, you have to start with the P equal to how many Q? So the P is 36 over Q minus 1. So I'm going to substitute into the first term. Alright, so the first term is equal to P plus 1 over 3, right? Okay, so I will substitute. When, the moment I see P, I will substitute 36 over Q minus 1. Okay? And then I have to plus 1. And then I have to divide by 3. Okay? Because the first term is P plus 1 divided by 3. So don't forget to divide by 3. And finally, you have to simplify the answer to the simplest form. So you have 36 over 3, which is 12 over Q. So the first term in terms of Q is 12 over Q. Okay, understand? So we have settled the first term. Now we are going to find the common ratio. So the common ratio is actually you just take uh, 3Q over 6, all right, the third term over the second term. That is actually the answer for the common ratio in terms of the Q. So these are the answer for question number 3, all right? So for geometric progression, it's quite simple. Remember, you always take the second term over the first term. Alright? Don't forget, don't take the first over the second. It should be the second over the first and the third over the second. Alright? Alright, so we have settled question number 3. Let's proceed to question number 4. Diagram 4 shows the curve y equal to hx. The straight line y equal to negative 5 is a tangent to the curve. Okay, this question is actually uh, very good because it's actually testing you the concept of the uh, differentiation and integration. So you are given the uh, second derivative, you are given the first derivative, right? This is actually dy dx, h prime x. Okay, if you have double prime, it means you differentiate twice d2y dx squared. Alright, so now we are going to solve the, okay, we are going to solve the equation by finding the equation of the curve. So, in order to find the equation of the curve, you must understand that equation of the curve is actually hx. Okay, so you're asking what is the function hx? So you have the um, d2y dx squared, which is equal to 6. You have the dy dx, which is equal to 8. All right. So now what you need to do is you have to 
uh, understand why they give you y equal to negative 5. The y equal to negative 5 is actually for you to find the we turning point. We need to really understand the question, okay? And your concept must be good. So now let me explain to you. So you have h double prime x, which is d2y dx square, and you have h prime x, which is dy dx. Okay, so now if you uh, differentiate your y, you will get h prime x. You differentiate your hx. You differentiate your h prime x, you will get h double prime x. Okay, understand? So uh, I'm going to explain to you, let's say you have y equal to x squared. So when you do dy dx, you'll get 2x. That's called h prime x. Then you do again dy dx, okay, from the dy dx, you will get double prime, h double prime x. So you get 2. So you see, when you start, okay, you differentiate. So when you want to get back your function, you must integrate. So, okay, the moment you integrate your d2y dx square, you will get your dy dx. Understand? Okay? You integrate your d2y dx square, you get your dy dx. And then when you integrate your dy dx, again, you will get your function, which is hx. Okay? Or you call as y. Understand? From the function, you differentiate, you get h prime x, you will get h double prime x if you differentiate for the second time. Then, if you integrate, you will get back, okay, the dy dx from d2y dx square. Alright, so I'm sure you understand. So, after you understand the concept, then we can start to proceed to the next one. Okay, the next step is, after we understand the concept, so now we are asking to find the h hx, in fact, is actually the equation of the curve. So, now let's study the tangent to the curve. The tangent to the curve is a straight line that touches the curve at a point. So that point, at that point, the y is given negative 5. So that means you actually can uh, try to figure out how to understand the dy dx first. So your given dy dx is 8, which is h prime x, which is equal to 8. Okay, so now... What you need to do is, you must have the point. Right, so it looks like very complicated, isn't it? So we start with the d2y dx square, which is 6. So from d2y dx square, if you actually integrate, you will get 6x plus c, right? So as I say, you are given h, uh, h double prime x. So you integrate, you get h prime x, which is 6x plus c. So that is why they give you the value of h prime x, which is 8. So you can substitute to get the c, okay, when x equal to 1. So after you got the c, you can write back your dy dx is 6x, okay, plus 2, right, with the c just now, which is 2. Now, from the dy dx, if you integrate further, you will get y, which is actually the function that you want. 6x squared over 2 plus 2x plus c. Okay, now you need to simplify. Okay, this is what the question asks you to find the equation of the curve, which is y. Okay, but the problem is you need to solve the c. So in order to solve the c, you need to have the point on the curve. So let's simplify. So we have y equal to 3x squared plus 2x plus c. Okay, by looking at the point, the turning point, which is negative 5, so we have uh, to find the C, which is actually we need the X and Y. But we actually got the Y only, which is negative 5. So how to find the X? Okay, so the, the concept now is at the turning point, dy dx must be zero okay remember this is very important concept whenever you want to find the turning point you must let dy dx equal to zero okay so when you let the dy dx equal to zero then only you can find the x clear so now i'm going to find my x because without the x i cannot find the c 
So I will have to let my dy dx equal to 0, 6x plus 2 equal to 0. Hence, the x is negative 2 over 6. Logically, it's correct because it's at the left, right, to the 0. So the x is negative 1 over 3. Now you substitute the x, which is negative 1 over 3, into the equation and you find the value of c. Let's solve it together. Okay, substitute carefully because there is a negative. So you have uh, negative 5 equal to 3 times negative 1 over 3 square plus 2 times negative 1 over 3 plus c. Wow, so many negative. Huh? So we need to solve it carefully. Alright, so let's do again. Negative 5 is equal to 3 times negative uh, 1 over 3 is 1 over 9. Minus 2 over 3, right? Plus C. Okay, so uh, let's uh, do it carefully. So you have negative 5 equal to 1 over 3 minus 2 over 3 plus C, right? So uh, finally, you have negative 5 equal to negative 1 over 3 plus C. So then the C is actually negative, right? Obviously, you can see uh, the y-intercept for the curve is actually below the zero. Yes, c is negative 5 plus 1 over 3, which is negative uh, 15 plus 1 over 3, right? So the c is negative 14 over 3, right? Okay, when I see c is negative 14 over 3, I'm very confident because if you look at the arrow and the y-intercept of the curve, it's actually... Uh, Logically, is right, right? So C is negative 14 over 3. Okay, so finally, we have solved the equation of the curve. Look at that. The C is negative 14 over 3. It's actually negative value. So don't forget to write back the equation of the curve. Y equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 14 over 3. Okay, uh, just want to... Uh, remind you you need to write y okay it's a must to write y in SPM exam okay because this is equation of the curve so it's actually a must to start with the y equal to 3x square and then followed by plus 2x and then minus 14 over 3 so this question is very good because it actually recall the concept of the relationship between the uh, integration and the differentiation. So please make sure you really understand. I just summary the concept. So if you have the function, you differentiate, you get h prime x. You differentiate again h prime x, you got h double prime x. Okay, so if you integrate back, you get a function, right? All right, so let's have a look for next question which is about the limit. Okay, when you see question about the limit, you always ask yourself, you have to uh, modify the function when x approaches infinity into fraction, all right? Because when you see the function is in fraction, then only you can uh, study the function when x is become bigger and bigger, all right? Approaches infinity means it will become a very big number, which we cannot express. So we will say approach infinity. So let's look at this question. Evaluate the limit for 2x squared plus 3 over x squared minus 5x plus 1. So by looking at this question, it's actually uh, x approaches infinity, right? So we need to divide the uh, function with the denominator uh, x square so we have to divide by x square for every term all right so let's uh, modify the function so that you can see uh, when x approaches infinity the value can be fine for the function that with the limit copy the question Alright, so we will uh, write properly x approached infinity and then we have to divide term by term with the x square. Alright, so let's divide 
uh, one by one with the x square and after you divide you need to simplify and uh, after you simplify then only you can substitute or you can observe the value of function when the uh, x approaches infinity right so i copy down everything to x square plus 3 and then i will divide okay divide by x square for every term so 2x square divided by x square plus 3 over x square okay and then the down one also i have to divide by x square all right so every terms you have to divide by x square and after that you have to simplify to the simplest form so i will have the uh, 2x square or x square is 2 plus 3 over x square and then i divide all right after i divide the down one also i have to simplify it become 1 minus 5 over x minus 1 over x square right okay so it seems like we we would like to see the function like this so that we can observe when x approaches a very big number the one with over x or the fraction with over x will be approaches zero so we can say that uh, the three over x square will, uh, will be zero off and the uh, minus five over x will be zero off and minus one over x square will be zero off because when x approach a very big number the number will tends to become smaller because it's a fraction example you take 3 over 1000 right okay or 3 over 1 million so it becomes smaller and smaller when x become bigger so in this case we will say for the limit we will say uh, these terms with a fraction uh, with the x or x square as a denominator will be zero off okay understand that is how the function work all right so that's why we need to divide until we can see the fraction so hence we can see the number two okay and one are not affected by the x when x approaches infinity right so the limits will be uh, two over one which is two okay understand so the way to do limit is a bit uh, uh, different and you need to uh, accept the fact that this is how you solve the limit okay so try to practice more and you will feel that it's actually the same pattern when you want to solve the limit okay so this is about the uh, limit uh, i really hope that you can understand how to do limit okay so we will proceed to the next question uh, this question is again about differentiation so firstly you have to differentiate dy dx so i'm sure you know how to do dy dx remember you take the 2 times to the 4 then x then the power minus 1 right and then when you see 3x you differentiate you get 3 right and then when you see number is 0 okay so dy dx is 8x plus 3 so now you need to substitute the 2 into the dy dx so you will get 16 plus 3 which is 19 okay so in exam if you really don't know how to do the small changes you just do dy dx you will get two marks but i just want to tell you the small changes or approximate change is very easy okay now you see uh, they say find the approximate change in y in terms of k when x change from 2 to 2 plus k where k is a small value so for this question okay you have to find the small changes of the x first before you can find the approximate change in y approximate change and small changes is the same so the way to write is you use a delta y okay delta y to represent the small changes or approximate change in y so let's do it together now so to tell you for this one the formula was not given 
So you must actually know that dy dx is actually equal to delta y over delta x, which is actually uh, small changes in value of y over small changes of value in x. Okay, is always equal to dy dx when the uh, small changes, the value of x that change is very small. So you look at the formula that in the formula list uh, for SPM exam, there is no formula for the small changes. So that's why you don't know how to start, right? So, okay, so now I just want you to add on to the list. Maybe you can get ready with a new formula sheet and write down. So this one not given, so you must memorize. So delta y over delta x is always equal to dy dx. Delta y is called as small changes in y. Okay, or you can say as uh, approximate change in y. Same, same meaning. So normally when you want to find your delta y, you will take the y, the after changes minus the original y, or we call it y new minus y o. And the delta x also, you will take the x, which is after changing the value, okay? Or you can call as x new minus x origin. So uh, the new is always referred to the value after it changed. So this one will be provided by the question. It's either they gave you uh, delta y, ask you to find delta x, or they ask you to find uh, delta x, they will give you delta y. It depends. So for sure, they will give you either one. Okay, so let's see what the question given. Uh, in your question, the question say when x changes from 2 to 2 plus k, that means the 2 is the original value. And the new one is x new is 2 plus k. After change, it will become plus a, a additional k value. The k value is a very small value. So now you need to find the small changes. So you will take the x new minus x original. So you will take 2 plus k minus out the 2. So the small changes of the x is k. And then you see, very simple, you want to find the delta y. You already got the dy dx, right? You just take the dy dx times with the delta x will do. Okay, just use this formula, okay? Now, you just take the dy dx value just now was 19, isn't it? You just times with the delta x. That's it. The answer is very simple. So, delta y, okay, is actually equal to dy dx times with the delta x. Alright? You understand why? Maybe I need to explain to you so that you can understand. So, you see, we have the triangle there. The horizontal is small changes in x. The vertical is small changes in y. So when you see the triangle, you want to find the delta y over delta x, right? At the curve, at the point, the two point on the curve. So delta y over delta x, okay? Uh, is actually when the value of the delta x become very, very small, okay? It keep on decrease. The triangle just now was big, okay? The blue one because the delta y and delta x are bigger. Now, if the triangle becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, so you notice that delta y over delta x will be actually uh, almost very close uh, on the line, right? It seems like lies on the line. So we can say it's actually equal to the dy dx, which is actually gradient of the blue line. Do you understand? This is a concept that you must know why the delta y and delta x must be very small value. Then only you can use a dy dx, all right? Okay, the gradient of tangent to the curve. Okay, so we have actually understand the concept. Then only we can recall. So now you understand why the delta y and delta x must be a small value. If not, it won't be lies on the blue line, which is actually the tangent. Okay, if it is lies on the blue line, then it's become the gradient uh, the same, right? The gradient of the tangent is actually equal to delta y over delta x, which is also gradient for the triangle. Okay, I hope you do understand. Okay, so if you really cannot understand, for the small changes, first thing you find the dy dx. 
Second thing, you can find either delta y or delta x given by the question. And then you just use a formula that I write in green color. Delta y is always equal to dy dx times with the delta x. So the answer is 19 times the k. Clear? Understand? After you understand, please remember the concept, okay? Because there are so many concepts for paper 1 question, so you need to memorize it, alright? So this formula is, is not given in the exam. So you will lost if you can't recall the formula. Okay, so please jot down and remember the formula from now on. Okay, so let's get used to the hot question. Sarah works as a salesperson at Supermarket Bahagia. She earns a 2% commission on total sale over 5,000. Okay, total sale 5,000, which is paid as a bonus at the end of the year. Okay, let her total sales be represented by x. Given that fx is equal to x minus 5,000 and gx is equal to 0.02x. Alright, so this is uh, the function involving Hort's question. So let's see what the question asks okay, about the Hort's question for Sarah. Okay, the question is asking which of the function is either fg or gf, okay, which calculate the bonus at the end of the year for Sarah. So uh, how to answer this question? Is it FG or GF? So let's uh, study the concept. So you are given the total sales is represented by X. And then the FX is actually uh, X minus 5000. Okay. And the GX is 0.02X. So you will choose FG or GF. Uh, the question is actually asking for the a bonus. Okay, calculate the bonus at the end of the year for Sarah. So the bonus is actually 0.02 from the total sales. So uh, actually when you do function, you have to understand how the function work. So we will focus to the function of the total sale, which is fx equal to x minus 5000. You need to substitute this one, this fx, into the function of bonus function, which is gx, right? So that means you have to sub the f into g because the bonus is actually 0.02, okay, or 2% on the total sales, right? And the total sales function was given by fx. So that means you have to sub the fx into the g x so in this case we are use g f x okay for function we will sub the object into the function but when we read we will read as g followed by f so g f x is actually 0 0.02 times with the total sale function which is x minus 5000 so uh, how to explain the answer is you show like this you show how you sub the F into the G will do, okay? So that is how we answer the horse question. Sometimes we have to show the step to uh, justify the answer. Okay, so it looks like it's quite simple, right? It's quite easy. So actually, if you maybe you don't understand or you don't know how to do, you can try to sub the F into G or sub G into F, right? So after you sub, you notice that if you sub the F into G, then it's logic. But if you sub the G into F, it is not logic, right? So uh, you, you will get something which is not so right. Okay? So that is how you test the logic sense of the function. Okay? Understand? You can try to work out your FGX. Okay? Uh, your FGX is... Uh, you will substitute the... Uh, 0.02x into the x which is not logic right okay uh, so if you sub the f into g 
it seems like uh, logically is correct because it's two percent of the total sales. So you sub F into G, so it becomes G F. Okay, understand? Okay, now we have answer which of the function F G or G F would calculate the bonus at the end of the year, and we have explained the answer by written down the composite function. Now you have to calculate the bonus if Sarah okay sold. Uh, with a certain amount of money, okay, the money is uh, 9172, right? Okay, so let's have a look up. Next question. So we will take the 9172 and substitute into the composite function just now, which is uh, 0 0.02 times 9172 minus 5000, and you just work out the bonus for Sarah okay so uh, that is how you calculate the uh, bonus using the composite function okay so you must understand what is total sales how the total sales work okay and how the bonus function work all right so the answer is 83 so it's quite simple if you understand the how the function work how it function if you don't understand you will be a uh, you will be very very confusing right okay now we have settled the function so now we proceed to the next question okay so for this video uh, it takes quite long for me to explain the question one to one so that you will understand how to solve the trial exam question so now let's do another one which is question number nine this is a statistic and i think this is very very hot I'm sure this question will be in focus. So please pay attention. Eh? I, I actually uh, can say that this question is very, very uh, popular nowadays. Okay. So you are given actually the two factory A and factory B. In fact, it's very easy. When you see there is a two, uh, two things or two objects given, you first thing is you find the mean. Okay, find the mean. And then after you find the mean, you will actually realize that their mean are the same. And then with the mean, then you find the standard deviation for the time taken by the company of factory A and factory B, respectively. Okay, now please uh, try to find the mean for uh, factory A and factory B. Okay, how to find the mean, I'm sure you know, right? You just take the... Um, the you must know which one is the frequency okay which one is the score the score is the time okay and the frequency is actually given by the factory a and factory b are the frequency so you just time uh, for a we do the a first huh? okay so we multiply one by one okay five times three six times two seven times nine plus eight times two plus nine times four over the total frequency you add up and then you do the same for B. Okay, for B, you take uh, 5 times 1, um, and then 6 times 5, and 7 times 7. And then you plus with 8 times 5, and you plus with the 9 times 2. Summation of data over summation of frequency. So you find the two, standard, uh, two mean before you can find the standard deviation for both uh, factory. Okay? So just uh, do fast because it's quite long. So after you do, I'm sure you get the, the mean for both factory are the same. Okay, I'm waiting for you to press a calculator. And please uh, uh, jot down the mean in four significant figure. Okay, and please double check your mean because it's very important for you to have the right mean if not your standard deviation will be affected uh, later on okay so what is a mean okay uh, let you try first because you need to find the mean for two factory so hopefully they are the same so the mean are 7.1 right uh, i get 7.1 for both factory a and factory b okay after we got the mean uh, because they are equally good, right? So we want to sh uh, sh uh, we want to find out which one is the best. So we will find the standard deviation. So whenever you see the question asking you to find the best one of the of the two with the list of the data given, this is the way to do. Okay, 
find the standard deviation. Do you know how to find the standard deviation? Okay, I'm sure you know how to do, right? So you can just uh, actually take the uh, formula uh, sum of the data square over n minus the mean square and then you square root, right? Okay, now you copy down the formula and you try to find the standard deviation for factory A and factory B and then we will choose uh, the best okay based on the smaller standard deviation all right so i let you try first before i discuss further so now you try to do on your own okay uh, find the standard deviation for factory a and factory b okay so i don't have the space to write so I try to write on the question. Hopefully you can see. Okay, so I'm going to find the standard deviation for the factory A and factory B. So how to write the standard deviation? It's something like a curly six with a square root, right? All right, so let's see. Uh, I find the uh, A first, three times five square, okay? The data square. Uh, frequency no square okay two times six square right and then nine times seven square and then plus two times the eight square and plus four times the nine square all right extend the square root longer over total frequency okay and minus the mean 7.1 square just now all right so you need to do carefully and uh, always press your calculator two times so that you can uh, get the standard deviation accurately for the factory A. Alright, so the mean is 7.1 square. Alright, so after uh, you do, you label that is standard deviation for factory A. Alright, okay, now you can start to press your calculator. Okay, later I'll come back to the answer. Now I'm going to do the standard deviation for uh, factory B. So for factory B, I will take 1 times 5 square, okay, plus 5 times 6 square, and then plus 7 times with the, okay, uh, the score, which is 7 square, and plus 5 times with the 8 square, and finally is uh, the last frequency is 2 times with the 9 square, alright? So over total frequency, you plus 1 plus 5 plus 7 plus 5 plus 2, okay? Now you have to minus the mean square, okay? You show the answer, uh, working clearly before you write the answer. The step is very important. Okay, after that, you press your calculator and make sure you will get the answer, okay, uh, in four significant figures, alright? So, I'm waiting for you to give me the answer. The answer are, for standard deviation, for factory A is 1.261, right? And for the factory B, what do you get? Uh, okay, we need to do comparison between them and we need to choose a smaller one out of the two standard deviation. So I'm waiting for you to give me the standard deviation for the factory B. So what is the answer? Um, after you get the answer, you must choose the smaller one, the smaller, the cuter. Okay, so the answer for the standard deviation B is... I'm getting 1.044. So, uh, which one is smaller? Of course, 1.044 is smaller than 1.261, right? So, you're asking to, uh, based on the values obtained, okay, determine which factories employees are more efficient to complete the job. Justify your answer. Alright, just to tell you that, you will see this sentence uh, quite frequent in your coming exam. Justify your answer. So how to justify your answer? You cannot just show the standard deviation and say that is the answer. So you have to answer by writing a sentence. 
or you have to write a statement to support your answer, to support your working. That's called justify your answer. Now, actually, it's very simple. You just uh, uh, mention that, okay, the smaller the standard deviation, the more consistent the data is, then it shows that the uh, factory B's employees are more efficient to complete the job. That's it. Okay, so you write in a sentence. Okay, understand? That is so-called justify your answer. So if you never write the sentence, it means you never justify your answer. Alright, so let's uh, write the sentence right now. You can uh, use the two sentences or three sentences to justify your answer. Alright, let's do it now. Okay, you can write at this worker from the company B or factory B. Okay, more efficient uh, because uh, it has a smaller standard deviation compared to workers from company A. Okay, so uh, just write a sentence to justify your answer. Okay, so that you will get full marks. Okay, due to lower standard deviation, which is actually 1.044 compared to uh, uh, factory A, which is uh, 1.261, right? Alright, so uh, when you are asking to justify your answer, you have to write a sentence to support your answer, okay? So, um, for this question, you have to show the step clearly, okay? Uh, you have to write the sentence to show the comparison between the two uh, values of standard deviation. Okay, and then you have to choose a smaller value because the data is more consistent. Okay, this is how you find your mean. Okay, and for factory A and factory B. And this is how you find the standard deviation. Uh, you can use either one formula because you have two formula, right? So either you use the um, standard deviation, which is find the data different with the mean, and then you square, and then you divide by n. Okay, can, no problem. You can use either one formula to find the standard deviation. So if you are using this formula, okay, x minus mean, and then bracket square over n, your answer is the same. If you use another standard deviation formula, which actually you find the sum of the data square, and then you divide by the n, and then you minus the mean square and square root, right? So uh, for standard deviation, standard deviation equal to summation of data square over n minus the mean square, okay? And then you need to square root. We used to use this one. But nowadays, actually, they like the uh, the standard deviation, which is actually x minus uh, mean and then square, right? Okay, like the next question you see is the same. They're asking the same formula. Okay, let's proceed to the next one. Now, let's proceed to the next question. A set of data consists of 20 positive numbers. It is given that summation of the data minus the mean square equal to m. Okay, and the summation of the x square equal to n expressed in terms of m, n, and n of the variance and the mean. Okay, now for this question, we have to refer to the formula list. So which formula you will use? Of course, you will choose the one with the x minus x mean and then square, right? So we will choose the number three. Okay, the first formula, we copy down the formula. So standard deviation is equal to, okay, let's copy down the formula and then we will use a formula right now. So now I'm going to show you how to use this formula for the standard deviation. Because for standard deviation, we have two formula. So for the both formula also you must know. So this is actually the standard deviation, but I actually take out the square root. I just squaring both sides. 
so it becomes variance. So variance is equal summation of x minus mean square over n. Okay, uh, the formula given is with the square root, but I square it so, so that easier for me to substitute, right? So now I'm going to substitute the um, data inside. So I'm given the summation of x minus the mean square is m, right? And then summation of the x square is equal to n. That one, I will use the other formula. For, question, for number 3, for uh, formula number 3, you got two formula. So both formula also you must know. So let's have a look of the formula again. Okay, I'm going to show you there are two formula that you must know for the variance and standard deviation. So let's have a look. So this is the, you look at number 3, there are two formula, right? So you have to use both formula, okay? Because we need to find the mean, all right? And then we are given the summation of the x minus mean square, okay? So we have to use the two formula so that we can find the mean by using the other formula, okay? So now you copy down these two formula and then you try to use the first formula first to solve and then after that, you will try to get the mean from the second formula that I actually circle. Alright, understand? Okay, let me show you. Now I'm going to shift the mean uh, square to the left. Okay, so I will substitute the variance that I got which is actually equal to m over 20, right? Okay, so now you shift the mean square to the left. And then you substitute the summation of data square, it was given n, right? And you have 20 of data, right? So that means it becomes mean square equal to n over 20 minus m over 20, right? So it looks like very simple. Okay, so now let's uh, simplify. The mean square is equal to n over 20 minus m over 20. So you can actually minus n minus m over 20 and then you square root all right okay this will be your final answer m over 20 and square root n minus m over 20 is the final answer for this question right so uh, i really hope that my sharing do help you to recall all the concept of differentiation so i think i shall see you in my next uh, video lesson so uh, till then Bye-bye and have a nice day.